There are a number of special features you can turn on or off for a merchant account to give them additional functionality in their gateway. So to do this, I'm going to go to a merchant account that I've previously boarded. Go down here. And so here's all their information. I've got the merchant name up here. I've got some of their contact info, all that. And I've got an option here for advanced merchant features. And so this is where all of those extra features live. So what I can do is hit edit, and then I get a big list of features that you can make changes to. So for example, uh, this is an active merchant account. When a merchant is created, part of the onboarding process is showing them the terms of service that they have to agree to. If for whatever reason you want to show those to them again, you can do that by forcing the merchant to read the service agreement again. So the next time they log in, they'll see that agreement and have to agree to it before they can access their account. Very similarly, you can force the merchant to read the billing authorization next time they log in. So if I check that, the next time they log in, at this point, they'll have to read the service agreement and the billing authorization and agree to both before they get to their home screen. Next up is the ability to allow merchants to issue blind credit card credits. And so this is a special transaction type where a merchant can give money to a customer with no previous transaction, with no referenced transaction. And so this is a higher risk thing because it's just them giving money to somebody. And so it's blocked behind an advanced feature. If you enable this, you're going to get this unmatched credit agreement, which is pretty long, but you're going to agree to that and as soon as you save changes, it's going to trigger an email to NMI's support team so they can reach out to you and confirm that you want this on that merchant account. And then once you do confirm that, then they will turn it on. The exact same thing applies for blind electronic check credits. The enable advanced transaction routing interface adds some UI to the transaction routing page in the merchant control panel. So this will allow merchants to sort transactions to send them to the right processor based on things like amount or merchant defined fields. Next up is an option that isn't used very often and it will rarely result in approved transactions, but you can allow a merchant to accept credit card transactions with no expiration date. They have to pass 0000 in the value, but they can pass transactions without them, will attempt them, but again, they will almost always fail because that's a standard thing needed for accounts, but there are certain cases, rare, rare cases where that's needed. You can set a merchant as past due. So this is going to make it so when the merchant logs in, they see a notification that says their account is past due. Now this will automatically get checked when a merchant actually goes past due in the normal billing system, but you can manually turn it on here if you'd like for some other reason. You have the ability to enable automatic receipt sending functionality for API transactions. So our API has a variable where if the developer passes it, it will send an email receipt to the customer on a successful transaction, but that's not always there. So if it's not there, no email goes out. This allows you to turn this on. The most common use case for this would be someone who's using a shopping cart where they don't have control over the code in that cart. This makes it so that that cart will start sending emails, even though the developer of that shopping cart didn't implement NMI's email functionality. And again, the exact same thing applies for that for batch transactions. Going down a little more, we have the ability to set a merchant as delinquent. So much like this, uh, this gives you the option to make it so the merchant is delinquent. They will be able to log into their account, but they won't really be able to do anything. And so again, this will automatically get checked if the NMI billing system puts them as delinquent, but you can always do this for them as well for some other reason. Additionally, if a merchant is delinquent and you want to undo it, this also applies to past due, we will check these. And then if you want the merchants to still be able to process, you can always come into here and uncheck these options to get them into their account like normal. Now, as soon as billing runs again for the merchant and we see that they're past due or delinquent, these will automatically get rechecked. But if you want to temporarily give them access to their account, even if they're delinquent, you can do that. Now we're getting into some of the more specialized ones, and you'll kind of know if you need these. <laughs> the uh, ability to pass the commercial card indicator through Merchant Defined Field 18. Uh, this basically will make it so that on a transaction response on specific processors where this happens or where this is relevant, the commercial card indicator will be passed into Merchant Defined Field 18 in the merchant's reporting. You can allow a merchant to pass dynamic billing descriptors. 
So for example, if the merchant has a descriptor on their mid that they don't like or is their, is not their public facing company name or, or something, they wanna change it, this allows them to pass dynamic billing descriptors in the API so they can have different things show on the billing statements for their customers. Speaking of very rare use cases, we have the ability to allow username only for API sale and auth transactions. So this is for, again, very rare and weird cases for developers. Um, I, we would advise not turning this on unless there's a very good reason on a specific merchant. Uh, but yes, this will allow you to run transactions with the API, sales and auths only, without a password. Next up, we have the ability to include order ID when performing duplicate transaction checks. This is basically when a transaction is run through the gateway, the default behavior is to check the card number and the amount. And if those are the exact same as a transaction that's run in the past 20 minutes, we don't allow it to go through because we think it's a, an accidental double charge. Enabling this will make it so that a duplicate order ID will also cause this to happen. Passing card level result back through merchant defined field 18 is very similar to the one up here. Basically in some cases you can have that passed into the merchant reporting so they can see this after the fact. Allow merchant to capture for an amount higher than auth is a feature that will be more often used. And so this is basically if a merchant runs an authorization for $10 and they want to capture for $12, $13, something like that, this will allow them to do that. The default rules in the gateway are to only allow a capture up to the amount of the original auth. And so a use case for this would be a restaurant where they authorized the card and then the customer filled out the receipt and said, I wanna add a $17 tip or something. They can then capture including that $17 tip. Return an extended file batch response. This is the ability to see more information in the response file and batch upload. Enable required fields for retail transactions is a feature that will make it so that if you're requiring first name, for example, on transactions for a merchant, that's only going to apply to e-commerce transactions by default. Retail kind of lives by different rules in general. Basically, because the card is physically there, the required fields aren't applied. But if you would like those to be required, then you can check this and then all the required fields will be required no matter if it's e-commerce or retail. Next up is to prevent the merchant from adding multiple vault IDs with the same credit card or bank account numbers. So this is just a way to prevent a merchant from duplicating entries in their customer vault. So if you add a customer today and then five months down the line, they come to your store and you add another vault ID to them, that is kind of wasted space. You have the customer entered twice in your system. So this will throw an error if the merchant tries to add a customer to the vault, if their card or bank account are already in a vault ID. You can prevent a merchant from configuring convenience fees and surcharges. And so this is going to block the merchant from accessing the convenience fee surcharge page in their settings. You can still access it. So if you log in as the merchant, you can access that page and make changes. And so that's going to control what they see in their virtual terminal when they're running sales. If you wanna make sure they charge a 3% surcharge on every transaction in the virtual terminal, you can absolutely do that. And they don't have a way to disable that if you check this. You can require a processor to be specified on all transactions in the virtual terminal. So if you want to make sure the merchant is specifying which of their multiple mids a transaction will run through, you can do that. By default, the account will send to the default processor and they can select a specific one if they want. This one will make sure that they specify it every single time. And finally, we have merchant has access to cash discounting. This is a feature of the gateway that allows them to offer a cash discount to customers who are paying with cash or check. And so if you enable this, that will give them access to that functionality. And so there's quite a few here. And if I save it, I see them all listed here. Now this account is ridiculous. This is not realistic that you would turn on all these features. But anything that is set, you'll see here. If an account is past due, you'll be able to see this in the advanced merchant features. So it's a good place to check when you're looking at a merchant to see if there's any special cases with them, to see if they're past due, if they're delinquent. And it's really helpful, really powerful at helping you kind of give specific merchants a little more control, or in some cases like the surcharging, taking away a little control if you wanna make sure you can do that yourself.